I'm Mike, and today we are starchivores, how we are starch eaters despite society's general fear of carbs and starch in particular. So we're gonna look at populations around the world, see what experts have to say, look through the archeological record and some research and see that we are actually built to eat starch. We thrive on it. And that eating whole starches in particular are absolutely nothing to be afraid of. In fact, they can have benefits for your health like in the realm of balancing your weight. First, I wanna ask what actually makes an animal a something a vor? You already know about herbivores and omnivores and carnivores, but what about specialties like insectivore, for example? That's just an animal that gets a lot of their food from insects, quite obvious. Other examples include how our primate ancestors were frugivores or fruit eaters and folivores or leaf eaters, gaining much of their calories from those two sources. So simply put, a starchivore is an animal that gets a large portion of their calories from starch. Easy. Okay. But I have to admit, when I think of starch, I think of mixing that clumpy potato starch into water for a recipe or making a non-Newtonian liquid in science class, which is actually pretty cool, but at best maybe white bread. But we need to redefine our view of starch because for our ancestors, it meant whole starches like tubers and legumes and certain nuts. And yes, as this study shows, even whole grains back into deep Paleolithic times 100,000 years ago. So what is starch exactly? Well, starch really is just sun energy that plants turn into glucose and then tie into a chain and pack into a crystal structure to store and also make it less digestible for animals. But with the advent of cooking, which makes calories in starch 30% more available and also our development of starch digesting enzymes, humans became starch eating machines. And one person who's been harping on starch for a long time and also healing a lot of people through starch-based diets is Dr. McDougal. You can describe him as the man who cried starch, literally. Starch. <laughs> it's starch that has healed thousands of my patients. He might be a little out there sometimes, but he often says something that is undeniable. Throughout human history, all large successful populations of people have obtained the bulk of their calories from starch. Historically, there's been the native Mexican cultures with their corn, the native South American cultures with their potatoes, the Egyptians with their wheat, and the list goes on. All of the armies of history ran on starch, and even those gladiators were known as the barley men. Even today, despite all of the wacky, unhealthy stuff we throw on top of it, as this study mentions, 50 to 70% of the calories in the modern diet come from starch. That's the definition of a starchivore. And in terms of specific healthy populations, back when the Okinawans were the healthiest population on the planet in the mid 1900s, as this study mentions, they got 70% of their calories from starchy sweet potatoes, and over 80% of their total calories actually ended up coming from carbohydrates. And another thing about starch is it's really good at balancing out your weight. A simple example, the secret to high carb Hannah's 70 pound weight loss was a starch-based diet. And as the recent broad study demonstrated, a whole starch vegan diet is the most effective way to lose weight without restricting calories while eating as much as you want and not adding exercise of any study to date. And they pointed to the high fiber content as the main driver of that weight loss, but it might be more than that. It might just be how our metabolism is made. As this study mentions, many overfeeding studies have shown that our body performs hardly any novo lipogenesis or new fat cell creation from carbohydrates. They pointed to one study in particular that massively overfed people, even with refined carbohydrates, and they still found that about 90 to 95% of the fat stored came from fat. Only a wee bit of that fat was from sugar. So looking to that study, it's no surprise that the authors concluded that despite a increase in the amount of carbs turned into fat when you overfeed people, they still hardly store any fat from sugar at all. Okay, fine, starch won't make us fat, but is what we've been eating in recent history really the best indicator of what we should be eating? Now, let's look deep into our archeological past, starting with the comments of an expert. Here is Dr. McDougall talking to Nathaniel Dominey, PhD, biological anthropologist and professor at Dartmouth. You've spent your whole life studying the human diet and its relationship to teeth, 
and bones and chemicals and genes and so on. Your conclusion is the human being is a... Starchivore. <laughs> She also mentions that in order for humans to make it where we are now, we must have had access to some unique source of calories that no other animal really did. Something extraordinary happened in human evolution. Humans evolved an ability to acquire um, a resource that other organisms didn't have an ability to acquire. Meat is important to an extent, but not as important as um, the popular media might lead you to believe. It's unpredictable, it's hard to get, so fruits are not particularly reliable either, they're seasonal. Uh, the starches, the sugars that are um, kept in underground storage organs of plants are much more ubiquitous in the environment and much more reliable and are there pretty much year round. In addition to the obvious benefits of cooking, one way we developed our ability to eat starch was Amy One. It sounds like the next generation of robots that creepy dudes will marry, but it's actually known as the gene that makes your mouth water. The AMY1 gene tells our body to put amylase, the starch digesting enzyme, into our saliva. It strikingly accomplishes 30 to 40 percent of starch digestion. The rest happens from pancreatic amylase further down in the digestive system. As Domini says, to digest foods very quickly in the mouth and you can convert the starch in the mouth directly to, to sugar with the amylase in your saliva. And now for a final quick point as to why we do so well with starch and that is simply that whole starches are complex carbohydrates that digest slowly because of the fiber and they do not spike our blood sugar like simple sugars. They just release slowly through digestion which helps prevent disease like diabetes. Now moving on, some say that it was meat that allowed us to grow massive brains but meat just simply wasn't a novel source source of calorie capable of supercharging brains, otherwise lions and bears would be flying planes instead of us. Here's Domini again on the topic. Because there's not a very strong match between meat consumption and increasing gradual increases in brain size, scientists have looked to other options. And given that plant foods are such an important part of modern humans that hunt and gather foods, um, the money is on plant foods and a shift in the kinds of plant foods as being the major driving factor in, in increasing brain size. A mix of plant foods with a large amount of starch coming from tubers and seeds. Yes, in fact, starch is the perfect brain food because it's literally chains of glucose, which our brain eats up like crazy. And it's not just Nathaniel Dominey saying all these things, it's other scientists as well. From Professor Les Copeland, quote, cooking starchy food was central to the dietary change that triggered and sustained the growth of the human brain. Les Copeland co-authored this paper, which caused quite a bit of the stir in the low-carb paleo community by stating that high quantities of starch were essential for the evolution of the human phenotype. They got so attacked by the paleo community that they felt a need to write an official response, which actually turned out to be a pretty good summary of the paper. The authors wrote, quote, our article, which was subjected to rigorous academic review, proposes a testable hypothesis that over the last 800,000 years, our ancestors met the considerable and sustained glycemic energy requirements of our expanding brain, reproductive, and other tissues through a combination of carbohydrate, particularly starch consumption, the use of fire or cooking, and the evolution of multiple copies of the salivary amylase gene. In other words, we have been starchivores for the last 800,000 years, which is four times as long as Homo sapiens have existed. And looking to other studies, it appears that whenever we find these fossilized dental plaques, they contain starch grains. Even those Neanderthals that are supposed to only eat meat, as I mentioned in a recent video. In summary, starch has been a consistent source of calories that has fueled humanity for hundreds of thousands of years. It has helped develop our brain. It is the main source of calories for modern humanity. It has been a major source of calories for all civilizations throughout history that are successful. Whole starches are incredibly healthy. They help with weight loss, not just because of the fiber, but also because of the way our metabolism works, and they don't spike our blood sugar. And finally, they're delicious. I'm gonna go eat some right now. All right, that's it for today. Feel free to like the video because I know you like starch. And subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.